Hello, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday at 1 p.m. And you can also find me on the Conscious Resistance uh, YouTube channel and Conscious Resistance website. So today we have uh, that guy T uh, coming in from Atlanta. He is, um, he's got a, a YouTube channel, that guy T, and uh, hopefully he'll be making some content on the, uh, the Tony Styles website. If he if he decides it's a good idea, <laughs> so um, so T, tell us a little bit about how you became an anar anarcho capitalist. Well, it was um, kind of a quick journey. You know, people usually say you turn to an anar anarchist, you know, within six months of being libertarian. I told you about four. So, pretty much, um, I guess like right like right when I was like between eighteen, like eighteen and a half, my age. I um it was about two years ago. I I was a pretty I was never I was never really into politics growing up. I never really um found that much interest in it. But then once I got into Twitter, I I found you no know, more people into politics. So I would talk to people about, you know, different issues, you know, healthcare, especially like very controversial issues like the Trayvon Martin thing that really pushed me into it. And um I guess I was kind of more leaning toward Tea Party conservative type at first, um, you know, real con hardcore constitutionalists. And then after time, I discovered people such as Julie Borowski, John Stossel, um, Adam Kokesh, and that led me more towards libertarianism. And from there, I voted for Gary Johnson, which will be the last time I vote. <laughs> <laughs> but at least it was a libertarian for my first time. Much, and, better, much better than me. <laughs> <laughs> and then from that, I just transitioned, kept, kept reading, kept debating people, you know, studying the philosophy. And eventually I just decided, you know, that, you know, all these ideas, you know, I was already a libertarian. So I was like, eh, why do we need government for these little bitty things? You know, we already decided we don't need government for all of this other stuff. Why, why do we need government for this? So I began to look into it and I figured out, you know, there's really no purpose that government serves in those areas, especially the fact that the, even if they do serve purpose, it's done so, you know, through theft, which is taxation. And I um, obviously didn't agree with that. And I was kind of shy at first to go towards full anarchists. I was like, I'm going to piss off all my conservative friends. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, screw it. <laughs> what are you talking about? You make more friends. We're the most popular <laughs> bunch of people. <laughs> Actually, you, you piss off your old friends, you make new friends, right? more accurately put. <laughs> true, true. So, so, so who, um, like who influenced you the most? Like, uh, so you said Adam Kokesh and, and those people. And oh, Any books or podcasts that you like? Um, um, no, no books that much. Um, yeah, I never, I didn't really find out about it through any literature, but, um, as far as podcasts go prior to actually be becoming anarchist, now I listen to plenty of podcasts, but like I'm during my journey, um, I would have to say the first one that I came across was, um, was voluntary virtues. And, um, I think they were discussing Bitcoin and, um, some other event that was going on, I can't remember, but that and um, also John Stossel. I started watching that weekly, and you know, every week I used to he, he would cover a new topic. You know, new topic about why do we need government in this? Why government? Why the private sector is better than this at government? And you know, it all made a lot of sense to me. And I looked into it more online, and I was like, you know, hmm, and then. I guess those would be the my two main influencers would be um John Stossel and probably Adam Kokesh. So so you're twenty years old. I just want to make that clear because this is pretty unusual. Like like you don't meet many, you know, many anarchists that are that young, unless I guess they're homeschooled or unschooled, but I don't think you are, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> so you were able to expel all of the status excrement. Much quicker than most people. It yeah. Seems like. So, so, um, do you know any other, like, not not online, but like in person, any other people that are like your type of thinking, anarchists, like that are that young? Not really. I've, um, I've have I haven't really came across anyone. You know, I've come across a few people who um, are kind of libertarian, light leaning. You know, like kind of like you know, I want to end the drug war. I want to 
I don't think we should have um, entitlement programs, you know, things such as that. Gay marriage, you know, your average light libertarian, but, you know, still we need government to build the roads. <laughs> so, um, but other than that, no, I haven't really found anyone that's um, an anarchist my age. Would Really, it's, it's kind of hard to bring it up to. Especially, you know, when especially when talking people my age, you know, it rarely comes up in discussion. You know, I rarely talk about politics with them, and when I do, you know, I kind of I try I try to ease them into it, or I'm I'm trying to figure out should I just like kind of throw in little libertarian hints here and there, or should I just say stop being a fucking status one hundred percent? So I was like, yeah, just, just give them an intellectual slap in the face. Yes. <laughs> so so what about your family? How do they re- respond with all this? This, this transformation um, at first they were really freaking out like especially <laughs> my mom <laughs> no, she was scared. What are you doing? yes they were scared they were like um because i especially when i started making videos because prior to this youtube channel i had another one which um i, I was kind of like on my conservative base i was criticizing you know um the military and um government you know basically just basically what i'm doing now but you know less structured and kind of sloppily but um yeah they were really freaked out they were like look look you got to stop making these videos because i don't want the swat team to come kick down my house you know you can't be saying you don't like obama online you know you don't know who's listening i'm like well the nsa is listening you know we can guarantee that now but Mm -hmm. they haven't kicked in our doors yet so i think i'm good (laughs) so so are your parents uh, would you say libertarian type uh i would say for the most part they're apolitical Okay, but I guess if I guess if it came down to it, you know, when I've when I've discussed things with them, they do lean towards more libertarian ideas when I when I um, explain it to them. But um, they did vote for Obama and twice. So, you know, I don't think they really focus too much on politics. They just um, they pretty much just, you know, average vote Dem because Dems are for the poor and, you know. I'm not rich, so. <laughs> <laughs> yep, not too many of us can claim that. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, it's 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 pretty uh, interesting. You know, when you when you go down this path, you know, you're immediately alienating some people, and uh, you know, we don't choose this path to make friends <laughs> or gain yeah. popularity. You know, we choose it because it's uh, you know moral and humane, and um, you know, it's the right thing to do, right? And uh, and I think that's what we should make choices in life. Like, what would you, do you? Should we really make choices to make more friends, or because it's the right thing to do? You know, like if you're yeah, in Nazi sure. Germany during during the Holocaust, you know, if to speak out against the SS soldiers, that's unpopular, right? Right. But <laughs> a lot of people did not do it because they're afraid, right? And if you're yeah. like you're claiming that we live in a free country, but then at the same time you're afraid to speak out because somebody might be listening, like. Doesn't that say something about how free we really are? <laughs> True. Just the, the idea of people just being stuck. You know, people. some people might call it a comfort zone, you know, and I'll say I go farther than that. It's not even so much of a comfort zone. It's kind of like a form of mental slavery because you're like really fearful of venturing outside that comfort zone, not only because you just you don't want to risk losing popularity or you do, or you just don't know what it's going to be like going outside of it, but because you're scared of punishment that might come once you start um, questioning the status quo or general ideas, especially about the state. Yeah, like the way Volta- Voltaire put it, he said, if you want to know who rules over you, find out who you cannot criticize. <laughs> right mm, good point <laughs> and 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 i think a lot of uh a lot of anarchists go through that phase of fear you know like when you're learning about all this stuff and you're shocked and then and then you you know you're like do i really want to talk about it online make videos about it you know write about it because somebody might be reading and listening maybe they're gonna you know tell the authorities on me you know which is which is interesting if you think about it like that it's like you know big daddy government is making sure we're all behaving and if somebody's yeah. misbehaving they're going to tell on you they're going to tell, <laughs> tell the authorities <laughs> you know and and it's kind of it's pretty silly so so in that sense you know statism is like perpetual infancy you know of people <laughs> yeah you know, people are not mature they don't grow up to be independent and uh, critical thinkers yeah. yeah, and unfortunately, even when they do grow up to be critical thinkers, they 
become ancoms and start throwing <laughs> Molotov cocktails in the Starbucks. So have you uh, have you gotten a lot of people criticizing you for like like coming from the communist uh, you know perspective? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, a lot of um, you know socialists and um, you know ancoms, communists, and stuff like that that I've spoken to. You know, they obviously disagree with my positions and they, um, they're not that fond of my videos. But we find we oftentimes find some sort of common ground in terms of removing the state from a lot of industries and a lot of areas. Um, except except for, um, I guess, more so economic economic freedoms where we disagree. Because um, obviously I'm. Um, and and narco capitalist, so I don't believe the government should have any part in the market. Um, but you know, they say, well, no, because we should have some government regulation, and even more so, especially in these areas, and we should have government subsidizing these things because you know we're entitled to, you know, school or um, food and you know things like that. Which, you know, that that's it, usually when we go off our separate ways, and then the status start status terms start getting thrown at, at each other but um for the most part not really that not really too much um hostile negativity mm -hmm. in terms of my videos just um general disagreement did you ever get into the zeitgeist trilogy or the the venus project um no i'm not familiar oh, okay because that's kind of how i got into it and it's basically um yeah you ch check it out they're interesting but um you know, it, it's a great critique on, on you know, um, on society and politics and government. And, you know, it, it goes into good detail on the Federal Reserve and, you know, currency creation, the Mandrake mechanism, all that stuff. And and then so that from that perspective, it's really good. Right. But then when mm -hmm. they start proposing their solutions, which is the, they call it the Venus Project, um, it's it's distinctly communist in flavor. In, and it's not like a central ruling class of people. Instead, it, it's a central ruling class of robots that that dictates and and you know um, distributes all of the the resources and goods to the people, whoever needs it. Right? The robots somehow know how much we you know how much food we need, how much rice we need, mm. how much <laughs> you know the robots know everything. Right? So, so like they they basically calculate our standards of living for us. Basically, yeah, and and that's. You know they um, they put their their faith in. I mean, I mean, we, you know, anarcho capitalists embrace technology as well, but but not as a means of controlling our lives, like putting them in control. Like uh, you know, that yeah, that sounds kind of uh, you know, kind of Terminator ish, Skynet <laughs> type thing, right? <laughs> exactly. And I, I would I would love to ask these people, you know, because um, I'm pretty sure all of them who are in this group, I haven't, I can't say for sure, but I'm guessing. You know, I'm assuming they eat fast food, and I'm pretty sure they wouldn't like it if they wanted um, a Big Mac and extra fries. And the robot said, "No, you get five piece chicken nuggets <laughs> and a water. That's all you need." That's all you need. <laughs> yeah, and then it and then it reminds you of, of different people. Uh, I'm sure you met these people, the Luddites, which is basically people who think technology uh, is the cause of our problems, right? Like, mm. like, um, like those are the people who, who's, you know, always complaining, you know, you know, it's automation, the, te the, the robots are stealing our jobs. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Those kind of people, right? Who basically want to scale back technology when they think it's inconvenient for them, but they have no problem with typing on their laptops or using their iPhones or Androids. You know, that's fine because that makes our lives more convenient, right? <laughs> yeah. But when it Exactly. when it begins to replace their job at McDonald's, oh, okay, then then they have a problem. <laughs> exactly. And I always ask people that too, you know, especially when they made an argument, you know, where we need we have we have to maintain these particular industries, you know, these jobs, we can't outsource it to technology, you know, even if even if we're way past its time, you know, we still have to maintain the job because those people need the work. And I always ask them, okay, well, how much would you be willing to pay someone to pump your gas? Because we don't have those anymore. There's pretty much there's nobody standing there to come out and pump your gas for you. You just do it yourself, punch in the number, and they always say, eh, "I don't really, I wouldn't pay anyone to pump my gas." And I'm like, "Yeah, I shouldn't have to. We shouldn't. We shouldn't subsidize inefficient means of production, especially. You know, that's where like the thing where Made in America comes in, where you know you say." Well, I want to. I want to be in America. I want to have, 
you know, jobs at home, you know, even though it might cost, you know, 25 more dollars to build this product than if I outsourced it to another um, area or to technology, just because I want to maintain these feel good jobs where it's like, okay, you know, you'll feel good with the job, you know, you'll be poor and, you know, you're bankrupt in the um, country, the economy, but, you know, at least you'll feel good. If that's what matters. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, especially those people that complain about sweatshops and, you know, um, they, you know, they say, you know, workers being exploited by the evil capitalists, you know, who, who want to close down their plants in the United States and then, you know, open up a plant in Mexico or in Africa. And uh, I don't know, did, have you done a video on sweatshops at all? I haven't. I haven't. I've um, I've had a lot of discussions about it. I haven't um, done a video. I think I might have mentioned it in the video once, like briefly, mm-hmm. like just the fact that um, you know, people complain about the sweatshops, but even if you looked at the conditions people were in prior to the sweatshops, you know, they were like dirt poor farmers and things like that, you know, starving. So it's like, okay, granted, the sweatshop isn't you know the same thing as concierge at the Marriott or you know. Yeah. Or even fast food work at McDonald's, but I mean, at least their standards of living are rising above what it was prior. Because you can't, you can't just put. I mean, you can't. People act like you can just automatically boom an economy just like that. Like you can just go to Bangladesh and just put a GameStop and a Walmart and a freaking. Um, What's another expensive store? Banana Republic. <laughs> and everyone will be fine. You know, everyone will just start working and um, like it doesn't work like that. Just, but I don't think they just, um, just shower them with money. Everything will take everything will be taken care of after that. <laughs> yes, exactly. All you have to do is give them the money and then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bernanke logic. Yeah, yeah. It's uh it's it's interesting. You know, I was I was listening to a Tom Woods um uh, episode today. He was talking about the living wage, you know, relating to the minimum wage, right? And mm-hmm. uh, and he gave an interesting um, you know thought experiment. He says, imagine if Martians came and and they took away all of our machinery, all of our you know technology and assemblies and production and factories and you know, and we had to do everything by hand, right? Okay. Now, if employment was the was the goal, which everyone, including politicians, make it out to be, you know, we unemployment is this. We need un, we need employment to get to this number, right? So mm-hmm. <laughs> employment is a bit. So, so without machines, we're all working by hand, and we're all employed, but at the same time, we're all impoverished and on the brink of starvation, and will probably go, you know result in mass die off because because how <laughs> how can you feed a population, you know, that's so dependent on on machinery and you know all this technology to distribute all these products right throughout the world um, with your bare hands, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, it would be complete utter destruction, right? And and I think you have to people have to realize that yeah, you can't just you know it, it doesn't matter how many hours you work or how rich you are or how much money you steal from the rich, you know, <laughs> if you don't have the proper technology, the machinery, the you know the um, the ingenuity of entrepreneurs, we're 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 not gonna succeed. We're not gonna boom, right? Um, yeah. So yes, yeah, so that's. I mean, do you have you have this conversation with people about the minimum wage? Um. Yeah. You know, I've, I've had a video on the minimum wage. You know, which well, yeah, that, was, that was my first real controversial video where people were like, "Whoa!" <laughs> you know, I was agreeing with you on all the feminist stuff, but what is this? You want to get rid of the minimum wage? <laughs> Freaking right wing. Radical and um, especially livable wage. Livable wage is something that I think more people people don't really understand what they're asking for when they ask for a living wage. When people ask for the ask for a living wage, you know, there's different interpretations of what a living wage is. Some people say, like Obama says, it's ten dollars and ten cents an hour. Some people say fifteen dollars an hour. And I always ask, you know, what what do you determine a living wage to be? If you determine it to be enough to where people can afford food, shelter, and you know clothing, you know essentials, then obviously people are making a minimum wage because I mean a livable wage at McDonald's because you know most McDonald's employees aren't homeless, you know most McDonald's employees aren't in the street starving, and you know I always say, well, what's the livable wage between an, a McDonald's employee and someone like um, Donald Trump? 
you know, <laughs> if if a McDonald's employee has to pay two hundred dollars a month for rent, and Donald Trump has to pay, you know, twelve thousand, who 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 do we satisfy? Do we give both of them a living wage? <laughs> And is it is it just subjective on your living conditions? Because if that's the case, then I will definitely go sign a mortgage for a mansion right now if the government's going to give me a living wage to live there. A mansion where everyone else is paying for it, though, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The whole living wage thing is completely arbitrary nonsense. You know, it's like it's like you know how much food. How many beans is considered a living wage? How much meat per week? How much rice? How much vegetables? You know, how many cigarettes? Do, do, you, do you give a person luxury? Do you give a person, <laughs> you know, how much? Like, it's just completely arbitrary. Who decides these things? You know, nobody should decide these things. This is not something that's left up to government, you know. Uh, you know, government yeah. has no way of satisfying consumer demand whatsoever, right? It's a monopoly on initiated aggression and it has it has no accountability to the people whatsoever <laughs> you know um which is which is uh, which is another interesting um argument like like when when people talk about you know monopolies for me like you know the, like the recent net neutrality thing um you didn't do a video right on the net neutrality no not net neutrality yeah, yeah, didn't cover yeah, that. you should definitely cover that because that's a <laughs> that's right that's like in, it's in the uh you know, people are talking about it a lot, and because it's so ridiculous, like people are talking about, you know, we're gonna have, you know, the 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 um, you know, the ISPs are gonna form together, cartels are gonna, you know, gain monopoly status, and we need the government to go in there, regulate them, control them, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you gotta ask, well, what is the government? Oh, the government's a monopoly. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so um, definitely, you know, I I suggest talk about net neutrality. That's yeah, that's the next one. Even though I'm not, I'm not that familiar with it. I haven't really read too much up on it because I haven't had time. But you know, whenever I have a discussion with somebody, they always bring up Netflix. They always say, "Well, Netflix is for net neutrality because you know these evil companies are you know scamming Netflix, you know charging them extra money, you know for for them using extra bandwidth, you know which is completely you know immoral apparently, you know to charge for the amount of services that you use and." Um, I don't know. I've, I've never really heard a good argument for net neutrality, but there is um, no good argument. <laughs> yeah, there's no good argument. But <laughs> then again, I I haven't I haven't studied enough to where I could formulate a, a good argument against it. Other than the fact that you know government doesn't really have a business in the particular market, and you know just based off of prior um, knowledge of governments ruining things that is probably not going to fare well <laughs> and um but i haven't read the bill you know that we had there was another one that we had to pass before we were able to read it so by, by the way no one has read the bill it, <laughs> it passed in the fcc federal communications commission it passed with a vote of three to two uh and the people who voted for it were unelected unaccountable bureaucrats right so they voted mm. for it in secret we nobody even read the bill before it was passed, and I think most of the people they even voted for it didn't even read the bill. The bill is like over three hundred pages, <laughs> okay, and um, and so yeah, the, I mean the whole idea of controlling the internet is like it's completely ridiculous. It's, it you know the, you know a lot of people who try to defend it are like saying you know the internet is a right. I have a right to go on the internet. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> like, like what? Exactly. You, you have a right to food. You have a right. No, I mean, if if it costs like a, a company millions of dollars to give you a service like internet, why should you get it for free? <laughs> exactly. And and I see now. I always <laughs> ask um, if you have if you are able to produce it by your own means, then by all means, it's your right to have it. Yeah. But you know, it's not your right to charge me to pay for your Comcast bill, and you know, it's not <laughs> your right to charge me to pay for your food. Exactly. You know, same same argument. Yeah, I um, I was talking to my uh, my mother in law. She's she comes from she's a Hungarian. She comes from communist Hungary. Well, well, communist Romania. She grew up. So she's like really, you know entrenched in that way of of uh you know living and so mm -hmm. the way she looks at life is she's like life is expensive she's like i did the calculations and life is like really expensive you know living should be free everything should be free <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about you say look at that electricity coming out of your your light right your yeah your 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 light that's 
that's not free. The, the, you know, getting the water to come out, that's not free. You know, getting the food in your refrigerator, that's not free. So why should it be free for you? <laughs> like, what, exactly. What, 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 what do you want, slaves also? Like, <laughs> you know? that, that's pretty much what it is. Like, when, even when you're guaranteeing something for free, you're basically promoting slavery, even though, you know, there are people who will voluntarily um, do something because the government has the ability to steal our money to pay them. But you got to say, you know, if I'm entitled to this thing, this that means that even if government can't afford to pay the people that are servicing it, they have to have someone to service it because it isn't it is my right to have it. So it's like, for example, if it's my right to um, have a college education, you know, somebody's going to have to force those professors, you know, if no one's paying them to teach me because it's my right, <laughs> you know, or. Same thing as if if I have a right to, you know, people always say they have a right to certain things arbitrarily, you know, such as food and um, resources, which I never really got because the argument could be made for anything. You could say I have a right. I have a right to grant the 905, which I had to sell (laughs) recently, but I want to get it back, you know, but it's my right. If I have a right to it. Yeah. You know, it, it just diminishes the idea of you know, private property, which I think is necessary for society to function, because if I can claim the right to someone else's property arbitrarily and they can do the same to me, then that is chaos. That is, you know, the anarchy that people are afraid of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, that's theft right there. Yeah. You know? And but people don't realize that that, you know, private property is really the foundation of a, of a free society. You know, um, you know, the the ability for people like you know, we all innately understand how important privacy is. Like, you know, talking about the NSA, you know, pe- you know, some, some people have the argument like, you know, if you're not doing anything wrong, you have nothing to hide. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? You hear that. And so I ask these people, um, do, you, do you close the blinds on your window at night? You know, do you close your door when you're changing? Like, why are you covering your, why are you, why are you not letting people look into your bedroom? You have nothing to hide, right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, we all innately understand privacy, you know, we, nobody has to be, nobody has to be taught, you know, that privacy is important. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you have something to hide or not. <laughs> and, you know, even, even, even if some people are comfortable with giving up their privacy, you know, I don't mind, you know, I have a problem with it, but, you know, I don't think people see it as how it really is you know they see it as you know i'm okay i don't have anything to hide i'm okay with the nsa listening to my phone calls <laughs> so you know i don't have a problem with the nsa when they don't realize that the nsa is listening to everybody's phone calls so do you have a problem with the nsa unvol- listening to my phone calls without my um permission and you know th- obviously they'll you know say yeah well you know because we got to stop terrorists and crap <laughs> but you know it is the idea that i don't think people think about when they advocate for government that the 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 force aspect that you're you're not only making a decision for yourself when you're promoting government you're making a decision for everyone around you and nobody wants everyone around them to make a decision for them you know because i've never well not never but very rarely have i seen someone advocate for total government control over everything in their lives, you know, like, just let the state vote on it, whatever it is in my life, just let the state vote on it. And I'll go, go with it. You know, liberals, you know, they don't like, you know, don't let the government, the government shouldn't be able to tell me if I should be able to marry someone of the same sex, or if I should be able to uh, smoke weed, conservatives are saying government shouldn't be able to tell me if I should be able to own guns, or if I should be able to um, drive a diesel pickup truck. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and but they they make these arguments that they want their freedoms to be respected, but they don't respect the freedoms of others, which um, in the end is hypocritical. I think when you point it out to them, you know, they, they either accept it and try to say, OK, I see where you're getting at. Or they get pissed and they just say, well, you just hate you just hate America. You know, <laughs> you can go to Somalia. You're either a racist, a sexist, a bigot. <laughs> <laughs> Hate America, you hate your terrorists. neighbor, you, or a terrorist, <laughs> extremist, you know, <laughs> or you hate humanity, or you don't want people to be educated. <laughs> it's, it's always something. It's like it's like it's like a simple it's a simple concept, right? I don't want a ruling class, right? I don't think I don't think people's uh, the fruits of people's labor should be stolen from them. 
is that so difficult of an idea to comprehend? <laughs> yeah. You know? And for some people it is because you have this, this cognitive dissonance going on because I believe it's called the, um, the logical fallacy of the, uh, the appeal to uh, antiquity that, you know, since we've all grown up with government, that means it's good and right and it should continue. Right. Just because mm -hmm. it, just because, you know, government has always been there means it should continue to be there. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Which is um, pretty ridiculous if you think about it. <laughs> yeah. And I think a lot of people from the left, too, you know, when they make the argument that um, if we get rid of government, then the rich are going to control us. Then we're going to if we get rid of government, then we're just going to have a ruling class of corporations. And I always ask corporations, you know, first of all, they wouldn't exist in a stateless society, but even so, you know, companies, they don't have the le they don't have the authority to aggress upon you. You know, they don't have the le legitimized force. So, you know, you say who's like we people say, well, the gov who's the um, government is in, you know, screwing over the people because it's ruled by the corporations. You know, so we need to get rid of the corporations when it's like, well, no, maybe we get rid of the people who have the authority to use a gun to force you to do things you don't want to do then maybe the corporation wouldn't really have power because, I mean, McDonald's can't force me to eat there um, instead of Burger King um, unless, you know, they got government to pass a bill where, you know, government banned Burger King, then that's, that's okay. But if McDonald's just forces me, it's not okay, which it doesn't make sense. I don't see how they can come to that conclusion, you know, logically where you have one group of, one entity forcing its will upon others and the other entity which is not, so, but it's the entity that's not, an entity that doesn't have, I guess, the, um, the legitimized authority to do so, that's the bad one. But the entity that has the authority to force um, its will upon you and be bought out and, you know, promote special interests, those are the ones that we have to maintain, you know, which is government. We have to keep government active you know, we just have to fix it, but we have to get rid of all these evil companies and evil rich people. <laughs> exactly. I think, I think uh, one of my favorite quotes is, um, sending in a good man to reform the state is like sending in a virgin to reform the whorehouse. <laughs> <laughs> when people, people say, we got to work within the system. You got to <laughs> vote. You know, we can change it. It's just going to take time. You have to be patient, you know, decades. And I always, <laughs> I always ask, you know, how, how, many, how many people have, you know, worked work well within the system? I mean, you know, of course, you can say like lobbyists, you know, they work well. They get, they get things struck down sometimes. Then they also get a lot of things passed. So, you know, the system, you can't work within the system, but you can't work against the system in the system. Mm -hmm. So when you're... Working with government to try to shrink government, it's usually not going to work, especially, you know, especially if like you're like a small guy, you know, like just a regular individual, like say if you got caught with weed and you're like, people say, well, you know, don't fight government. You know, they have a right to arrest you for smoking weed because that's against the law. Just take your arrest, work within the system and try to get out, you know, on um, try to have your lawyer get you out, you know, where it's like, OK, and. You know, that never happens. You know, you get sentenced to 25 years for a gram of marijuana. And it's like, well, I'm glad, I'm glad I took that advice. I'm glad I worked within the system. That worked out well for me. Yeah, yeah. I, um, yeah, I'm generally afraid for, for people who, who try to, you know, try to go inside and, and really, like, like, it doesn't make sense. You know, the government, which is a, you know, a monopoly on initiated aggression, the most violent institution on the United in the United States, and we could arguably say on planet Earth right now, right? Um, the United States Empire is going to contain elements inside of it for its destruction, <laughs> to self-destruct. <laughs> like we're going to use the government to get rid of the government? Are you serious? Wait, what? <laughs> like you're gonna you're gonna use the mafia to get rid of the mafia, right? You're yeah. Gonna... <laughs> I, I saw this great meme. It's like it's like instead of trying to re instead of trying to end hell, you know, go to hell and change it from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, what? You know, you know, you know what you sound like? <laughs> have you ever, have you ever gotten, a, like when you, if you're trying to explain taxation and theft to somebody, have you ever gotten people who say, um, well, I enjoy paying my taxes. 
I'm not. Yeah, it's, yeah. They're not stealing from me. I'm giving it to them. <laughs> what do you What do you say to those people? You know, I always you know I get the argument often. You know, because people always say, "Well, you know, the social contract. You know, the invisible document that we're all." We all signed, you know, upon being conceived at birth, you know, just our existence means that we agree to this contract, which is awesome, you know. <laughs> nice contract. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they always say, you know, well, if you, if you don't like the tech, if you don't like paying taxes, then don't don't drive on roads, you know, or they say, you know, if, if you, don't, you don't have to pay taxes, just don't just don't um, don't do anything that has to pay taxes, you know, don't buy anything that has a tax, don't work anywhere that, you know, charges taxes, don't, you know, own property that charges taxes, which is anywhere, you know, you can't even go to a public park now, you know, you get shot if you're sleeping there. Yeah. But <laughs> or feeding the homeless, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the idea that um, you know, people this is the argument I've had which um is probably one of the one of the best attempts, you know, they say um it's not it's not forced if you're voluntarily, you know, they say you know, when you say, like, my taxes are being stolen from me, they're saying, well, it's not stolen from you. It's already taken from your paycheck. Well, that's, then I say, well, it's stolen from my employer. And they say, well, your employer might be able to volunteer. My employer might like paying taxes. I'm like, well, if that's the case, if you want to make that argument, then just make it the option if my employer can pay tax or not. Like, for example, if my employer currently, if they said, you know, um, we don't have to pay taxes, but we're going to still do it because we want to contribute to these elements of society. You know, we want to contribute to the schools and the area and stuff. So we're going to still take money, a little bit of money out your paycheck. You know, that would be something that I would have to take into consideration and, you know, negotiate it upon, you know, what it is there. But to say that to have the government force my employer to take my money so that they don't go to jail and then simultaneously I don't go to jail. It's not saying that it's, that's not the same logic as your employer likes paying taxes because if the argument would only be valid if the employer had the option to pay taxes, if it was voluntary, if it was voluntary. So I would say, well, make make taxes voluntary. Give everyone in the world the option to pay taxes. And if they don't like paying taxes, then they just won't um, contribute to certain aspects. And I'm pretty sure you would see a lot of people would say, I don't like if you just had a list of taxes that you pay every year. The government will probably go bankrupt pretty fast because I know I wouldn't pay for military. I wouldn't pay for, you know, at least 80 percent of the freaking roads here because they suck. Um, (laughs) I definitely wouldn't pay for the um, state school system, you know, indoctrination. (laughs) So I think people have the idea that they have to contribute taxes because without taxes, you know, you're, you're basically taking away the opportunity for someone else to enjoy something. You know, like if you take if you stop paying taxes for education, then, you know, there's going to be some kids who aren't going to be able to go to school, which um, isn't necessarily true. But it may it may happen. But you got to ask yourself, should I force my neighbor to pay for my other neighbor's kid to go to school? And I think I think we bring it more down to like a individual perspective, you know, where it's not not so much as the government taking money, but where it's. Are, do you feel comfortable stealing money from this guy to pay for this guy's stuff? You know, a lot of people say no, which I think shows, you know, the fact that a lot of people don't really aren't really in favor of um, aggression upon others. Mm-hmm. But when it's so massive, you know, it's an aspect of government. They just say, well, it's, it's, it's big and it's out of my control. So, you know, why not? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. When when uh, when they think of it in, in the grand scheme of things. They get all confused and muddled inside, and you know, they're like, "Well, you know, it's big, so it must be right." <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, it's like, um, what kind of a choice is it? It's like, it's like if if a if a, a guy is trying to rape a woman and he gives her a choice, you can either let me rape you or I'll kill you. You you have a choice. I'm giving you a choice. You can't say I'm not. I'm forcing you. You know, <laughs> you know. You either pay taxes or you go to. J- I'm giving you a choice. You pay taxes, you go to jail, right? So yeah. you, you're not being forced. That's that's you know. And and to those people who who tell me, you know, I I love paying my taxes. I'm happy to because if I don't pay taxes, we're gonna have stupid kids because we're not gonna have education. <laughs> and I'm like. All right, so if you love paying taxes, you know, that's fine, but I don't want to. So 
do you think that I should be, you know, forcibly caged for not paying taxes? You know, what if I don't want to? Is that then if I don't want to, then that is theft, right? If if just one yeah. person doesn't want to, then that's theft. Right? Yeah, people, and even on the smaller scale, you know, people people agree. Like even the, like the morally heartwarming stuff, you know, you know, we say we need we need help families who aren't able to afford food. You know, when if a if a guy went to a convenience store and rob them in order to buy food for his family, people would probably legitimately feel sorry for him. You know, like, man, this guy's on his last leg. He has to get food for his family. So he's stealing. But at the end of the day, they're not going to just say, well, you know, just let him go, you know, just let him keep stealing because so he can pay food. They're going to say, well, no, you still shouldn't be able to steal from people in order to feed your family. You know, as horrible as that sounds, you know, to have your family go hungry, it's still not your right to take from others. Whereas if he just goes to the um, um, welfare office and, you know, gets some EBT cards, you know, and it's, it's the, the logic just completely reverses somehow because it's wrong for him to steal from others to feed his family. But it's OK for him to go to another service called government that steals from others so that he can feed his family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. The logic is exactly the same. And people people don't realize that, unfortunately, you know. Um, yeah, it's really it's really amazing the cognitive dis dissonance that you come up with. I mean, um, you know, it, it's political euphemism is what it is. You know, you, we have to call things by their proper names, right? Taxation is theft. Quantitative easing is counterfeiting, right? War is mass murder. <laughs> you know, yeah. NSA surveillance is spying, right? Government education is indoctrination. So once we begin to call things by their proper names, people can take off the blinders and begin to understand the world as it truly is, right? Not as our uh, political masters would like us to believe, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's that's something that... Uh, have you read the book, 1984? Um, I haven't. Yeah, oh, well, you know, right up your alley. I mean, I'm sure you don't have to, but it's uh, it's basically, you know, <clears throat> all this... You know, you, I'm sure you hear, like, people making references, right, to Orwell. Yeah, I hear, I hear about it. All that often. stuff, yeah. Yeah, that's what I. Uh, that's what really got me into this when I was younger, 1984, and then Aldous Huxley, Brave New World, um, Animal Farm, you know, all pretty uh, awesome stuff to to get you thinking about the power structure, you know, and government, and you know, people. Some people make the argument uh, it's kind of ridiculous, you know, we are government, and government is us. <laughs> <laughs> right you hear that sometimes like i have i am i am the government you are the government why are you complaining i'm like all right so if we are the government then did the uh the jews that died in the holocaust they, were, they committed suicide right because mm -hmm. because, yeah, because, sure. they, because they are the government right if if uh <laughs> you, know, you know when when the government you know d decides to bail out banks at you know trillions of dollars so you did that right not, not the politicians. <laughs> I mean, how do you how do you respond to that? We are it, the government. It, you know, I I don't know. It's it's just it's you know people say that it's it's not hard to respond, but it's it's like you just have to bear with them because it's like man, that's that's really sad. It's some people have that mentality, you know that. You know, where we're not individuals, we are all part of a collective system where we every everybody apparently fits into this one um, societal bubble where, you know, one man's labor is another man's labor. One man's crime is another man's crime. You know, even though they don't, they don't go that far when they say, you know, government, we are the government because, you know, like you said, you know, did did we did I invade Iraq? No, that was Bush. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to pay for that. You know, so when people say I we are government or we are a part of government, you know, I say, not really. I mean, I may be a part of government involuntarily, you know, the same way that, you know, um, you know, the um Jews were part of the um Nazi, the Nazi um SS, or the same way that um slaves were part of plantations you know they they're all one thing but you know one side doesn't really have a choice in being a part of that thing so is it really fair to say that you know we are government so that makes government okay when i don't have a choice not to be a part of government yeah 
<laughs> and actually, you brought up you brought up the the president and war. And another thing I like to lay on people, uh, the shocker is I ask people, so do you do you think um, the president is a mass murderer? <laughs> and I like to shock up people. What are you talking about? Of course not. He's an he's a good guy. He's got he's got a family. He's got kids. He wears nice suits. You know how can he be a mass murderer, right? So yeah. so then the idea is that when a soldier goes overseas and murders innocent men, women, and children, right? Um, who is to blame? You know, the soldier or his commanding officer or the sergeant or the colonel or the general or the president. <laughs> you know, who is to blame for that? Is anyone to blame yeah. or is everyone to blame, you know? And, and you know, that's the, um, it's the, uh, what do you call it, the chain of command, but I, I rather call it the chain of obedience, right? Because mm -hmm. that's basically what it is. And, and I think the blame is on everybody, not just on the soldier who actually does it, but and everyone all down the line who is just basically an order follower, right? Yeah, true. So, I mean, have you, have you ever, I, I, I've, I like to point that out to people because, you know, we, we, have this, we have this idea that these, you know, these presidents are like near deity, superhuman type people that we put place up on a pedestal, right? And, you know, when they come through the streets in in a, you know a major city you know we got to block off the next four streets you know we got to they have to have a yeah, they have to have a you know police cars front and back they have to have all this you know it's like we're against guns gun control but you know i need 20 armed guards around me at all times <laughs> with guns protecting me, <laughs> me and my family <laughs> yeah and i think i think especially you know when you're criticizing like military and war it's it really you know it's fun to it's fun to talk about it with um, leftists, you know. But real the real fun comes in with conservatives because, you know, you can call Obama a mass murderer and say, you know, um, how many kids Obama, has Obama killed with drone strikes? You know, the neocons will say, well, yeah, yeah, he's he's freaking crazy and he wants to go to war with Syria. He's insane. But you know, when you go back to Bush and he's or um, or even Reagan, and you go back and say, well, what about these actions that the that the um, government took against you know foreign nations you know through military strategies and you say well no that was to protect our nation we had to do it it was for patriotism because they loved america you know it comes it goes back to the cult mentality where you have to defend your your team even though even though both teams are doing the same thing essentially yeah 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 it's, it's so ridiculous how you know during war people think it's like a like a football game you know there's there's or there's like a good guy and there's a bad guy like right or like a video game is a good guy and a bad guy no they're both mass murdering sociopathic megalomaniacs <laughs> you yeah. know that that are you know indoctrinating their their tax cattle to obey them obey their insanity basically you know and carry out all this all this destruction and violence right and but people, you know, have, you know, Hitler, he's evil. You know, we got to go there and we got to rid the world of not of, of you know, of, of socialism, national socialism. We got to rid the world of that stuff. But but, you know, then you, then you talk about, you know, you, you never you don't really learn about, you know, Joseph Stalin and, and Mao Zedong and how, you know, many, many more millions of people died under their regime than ever died under the Nazis. But you don't hear about that. <laughs> much you know you, you it's like they, it's a clever glossing over of that that little in, inconspicuous fact <laughs> yeah so i don't want to keep you too long so um let the listeners know how they can reach you um uh, you know your work yeah um youtube um that guy t um facebook um yeah that libertarian t and twitter which is uh which i'm most active on which is um at underscore that guy t and I'm going to try to upload at least once a week. You know, I've been crazy with my schedule lately, but um, I'm going to try to have a consistent stream of uploading. And even and also Tony Styles, I should be able to start writing there pretty soon. And um, you should be able to see some of my work there. And if you just want a little bit more, you know, you can always hit me up on Twitter because I'm all, I'm there pretty much 24 seven. Mm -hmm. So you're not a luddite, right? You don't hate technology. No, 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 no. <laughs> Technology is not going to be the end of us, right? <laughs> nah, not yet. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Not, not uh, Terminator Three Salvation, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> awesome, T. Good, uh, good talking with you. Thanks for the conversation. Uh, so this is uh, Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network and the Conscious Resistance YouTube channel. 
Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.